Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining in today, Intuition Network. I'm Natalie Coles, and I'm a psychic medium, a Reiki master teacher, and a pet psychic, stuff like that. So I welcome you guys today. Our special guest, um, well, before I do that, I'll say my sister Amy was supposed to be here, but she's feeling uh, under the weather. So Jim and I are going to handle it on our own. So um, speaking of Jim, here he is. He is um, a channeler uh, for the Ancient Master Builder Race, and we're going to find out what all of that means, but welcome, Jim. I think I uh, lost you, Natalie. I think I lost the uh, sound feed. Can you hear anything now? I can't Can hear you. Can you hear Natalie. anything now? Yeah, I'm not sure why. Uh, make sure your mic is not muted because something might have happened that did that on the little picture. Is that any better? If you want to, um, let's here. see. Okay. Can you hear me now? Nothing? Anything? Try, try going out and coming back in. There we go. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Thanks everybody for your patience. Sometimes things just happen. <laughs> hey Jim, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Well, we will see if we can get it working. Before we went on live, everything was working fine. So sometimes, who knows? Facebook, who knows? But thanks everybody for coming on and we'll see if he pops back on. But for now, um, I'll tell you a little bit about him. Um, if you go on to, um, let's see, let's see if we can get him. Can you okay, can you hear me? Yes. I can. Yeah, sorry about that. Yes. Right, no, that. no, that's okay right. <laughs> because we don't have Anyone control. We don't have control over the internet and stuff like that, so it's fine. Okay, so welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm oh, excited thanks to be for coming. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. So, tell us a little bit about. Um, how did this all begin for you? Because you're more than just a channel, but I know that's what you're calling yourself. How did it all begin for you, this communication? And, uh, <laughs> that's a big one. Probably spent about three hours on that. So, you know, the first half of my, I really didn't uh, start this journey until about seven years ago. Um, you know, I was a normal guy, married, children, job. You know, I was embedded in the illusion of this reality. And uh, I guess what, you, what I had was a dark night of the soul. You know, I kind of lost everything, yes. got divorced, the job, um, health uh. issues, and everything fell apart and got shredded away from me. And, uh, you know, I was looking for answers and I happened to walk into a psychic one day uh, that I'm very, very good friends with now. And she just kind of told me what was going on in life and, you know, uh, I just started inquiring about stuff. You know, it's like a rabbit hole. Once you find one thing, you start trying to figure out other things. Right. And she's like, you're, you're, ch you're a channeler. So I started, I mean, I was reading books left and right, you know, inquiring everything about life, questioning things. It became like an obsession. So, you know, as I started my uh, journey with that, um, probably about three years ago, during my meditations, I started seeing large blue faces and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And then my other psychic friend, um, during a, a, 
a, um, an energy group session, you know, she said, your guides are coming through and they got large blue faces. And I'm like, Oh my God. I was like, yeah. And she's like, they're called the ancient builder race. So oh, wow. I, mean, I, I could see him as clear as I'm seeing your face. And I started getting mm -hmm. messages with them and, and um, started on that journey. And then, you know, I was um, persuaded, persuaded to start channeling online and start doing YouTube channelings. Um, so I started doing that. And, you know, in the beginning, they were very bad, very murky because it's kind of trying like to hear underwater. Um, right. <laughs> and trying to figure out what they're saying. So, um, yeah, it, it probably took about two years for me to really get a good, strong channeling. And um, here I am. I'm, I'm doing channelings for them and energy work. So tell me, um, now you said you have a YouTube channel. Tell everybody what that is so that they can uh, check it out and go subscribe and everything. Wait. Okay. So there's actually two YouTube channels. Uh, it's called the Ancient Master Builder Race. The first, yeah, the first one uh, somehow um, I lost uh, all the information to get back into it, so I had to start a second one. Gotcha. Um, I have about 50 channelings on it. So the second chan, so the second channel, which I started up in January, probably has about six or seven channels. So that's my more recent one. Okay. Yeah, so everybody go check that out. Listen to his channelings. They're very pertinent to everything that's going on at the time that he's doing the channels. And it ends up, too, because I was listening to some of them, and it actually talks about things um, almost, um, I, I, don't, I don't like to say prophecy kind of things, but not, not so much that, but it talks about <laughs> the direction. Does that make sense? Is that, can you explain that a little bit more? How do, yeah. how do you get those channelings? Sure. Uh, uh, so I, so the ancient builders don't take off my, over my body. I'm in control of my body and all that. I'm just more of a conduit. Um, so, so basically the ancient builder race, you know, they're, they're a conglomerate of physical, non-physical entities. Um, they were the first incarnation within um, physicality from prime creator's energy. Um, you know, they, they come in different shapes and sizes. Some are blue, some are white powder, some are reptilian. I know that is a bad word with some people, reptilian, but, you know, just like <laughs> other species, Pleiadians, you know, you got good Pleiadians, bad Pleiadians. Um, you know, they're just a conglomerate of different species and entities of physical, non-physical, and they were the first incarnation of physicality that took prime creator's energy and they laid the foundation for this matrix and other, um, well, I, I don't want to say matrix because the controllers took over this matrix, but, uh, this sector and other sectors, and they kind of laid the foundation for life. And, you know, our galactic cousins kind of came in, helped seed it life. Um, so I would say the, the ancient builder race is, it's not really vertical. It's not like one person's in charge or they're better. It's more um, horizontal. So if you kind of picture like different strings being mm -hmm. woven into a rope at one point, mm -hmm. they started at that point. Prime creators that are just they're evolving horizontal, just further ahead. They're trying to get everybody on that same point. Um, basically, they lay the foundation. They have the genetic codes for life, uh, the building blocks. Um, you know, they're very old, um, they're very neutral. And so as they make the foundations, you know, the original blueprint was free will where your soul incarnated into a physicality and you were connected mm -hmm. to your soul. You were able to manifest, use crystals and not interfere with anybody else. Um, so of course, you know, this matrix kind of got um, hijacked by our current controllers. And they've kind of come back to try to figure out solutions on how to get it back to the original blueprint. And it's a conundrum for them. They're kind of watching it like a movie right now, trying to figure out their on reconnaissance because they can't directly interfere um, because the way this matrix is set up, it's set up by karma. And that's why a lot of the other aliens don't come and save us because if they directly interfere with uh, the free will here, they take on those energies and karma. So how does karma um, 
Yeah, so the way the system is, it's very ingeniously, systematically set up. So basically, you know, the energy world was the true energy world where your souls came from and mm -hmm. where, you know, you have your consciousness. So as the ancient builders, you know, set up the foundations and your galactic cousins um, started seeding life, you know, just like here, you got some good and, and you got some bad. Some of them uh, right. took over this matrix, uh, you know, wants, wants control of the genetics. They want to learn about life. They want to control life. Um, and that goes against the original blueprints. So they took over this sector along with other sectors, and they actually took a part of the energy world, which, you know, a lot of people are familiar with as a spirit world and kind of set it up as a, a, a place of learning, of school. Uh, which it is to their own ideology. So, you know, they were able to entice souls and say, you know, within this reality, we're going to kind of advance you. It's going to be a learning matrix and whatnot. So once they got the souls into that spirit world, and it, it, it seems very benevolent, very uh, good ideology where it's going to advance your souls and you incarnate here, you get cut off from who you are. And when you come here, right. you know, you're kind of flying blind. You got all these chemtrails and electronic interference, um, MK Ultra, all these things up against you in a system of, you know, monetary survival, you're going to end up making mistakes. So then when you pass over back to that um, spirit world, they tell you, you got to learn this lesson and that lesson. That's how they get you into recycle and reincarnation. Um, so going back to why you know the ancient builder race can't interfere it's because you you give your permission to come here and reincarnate so yep. when you come here if someone interferes with your lesson they take on that energy. and you know it's very important that even though it may be wrong can't interfere with it because they take on the karma because the universe doesn't realize what's good and bad. They only real think of vibrations and you got high vibrations right. and low vibrations. So, you know, religion for an example is, you know, it, it's perceived as it's good. It'll help you, but we know it's man-made rules and a lot of, you know, it comes directly from the controllers. So it's actually a low vibration um, energy. Because it, it, it gives its ideology and tries to force its rules and regulations onto people. And you can't do that. That's one of the laws that you can't impede on free will. Um, so, you know, an example also, you know, with what's going on in the world. And, and if you notice, like with the protests going on, you know, people mm -hmm. that are protesting against something, they actually add energy into it. And it becomes worse than what it was because. Yes. You ha the, what the ancient builders are trying to teach is you have to stay neutral. You can have a, you, you can observe something and say, okay, that's not for me. This is for me. Um, but when you add energy into it and you perceive it as something bad, then you add energy into it. So and it, it, a good example, which is hard for people to understand, if someone was you know passed over on the side and they. Um, sexually abuse someone, you know, children or something like that. And they say in mm -hmm. the next lifetime, they owe that karma. And they want to be abused. So if they become, you know, a, a, a victim, of, you know, a child, uh, pedophilia, and you try to go in there and save them, you actually take on that energy and you uh, take on some of that karma because you're directly interfering with that person's free will because the universe doesn't, it doesn't recognize good or bad it's either high or low vibration so if you're going in there right and they have a contract to experience that you actually add energy into the fuel that's why a lot of your health professions your cops your your doctors uh, when they try to help people to low vibration they actually take on that energy and you know a lot of them commit suicide or you know they go on the wrong path or they go on to drugs so everything is about energy and the way yes. the souls have the system set up, the ancient builders are trying to teach how to use the energy to weave through this matrix. Because, you know, life is like a highway. You, you got different lanes you're going to drive down, and, you know, you're going to come across toll booths. So your free will is going to be, do I go through the easy path, exact change, 
Do I wait in line to get change or do I just veer off and go off the next exit? So they actually had me write a book on energy control and how to weave through this matrix because a lot of people think that, you know, if you do the love and light and you think positive, you, you know, it'll fix everything. And it's not. You, this is a very, very complicated, convoluted matrix. And you got to learn how to weave through it. And the only solution yes. that they come up with is not to reincarnate into this matrix. Because if everybody stops reincarnating, the controllers can't have anything over you because it's very sought after. If you look at the intricacy of the human body and, you know, the food this is what they want the genetic codes for and you know everybody thinks that life is so simple that you just wish it and it happens it actually doesn't it's, it takes so many perfect balances for life to take form that you know it, it's hard it's not that easy and that's what they're yeah. after and you know this matrix is set up and like I said you know the spirit world is set up as a school um, for their own ideology controllers so every time a soul reincarnates here it becomes conditioned it becomes it takes on the beliefs of what the controllers want and you kind of lose sight of who you truly are so once they condition you to the way they want you then they let you out into other realities and that's how they indirectly overtake other realities without taking on some of that karma and you know where everything is going right now you know politics and all these millions of things, you know, it's all distracting to get people riled up, collisions, when at the root cause of everything is artificial intelligence. That's what the controllers want. They want to start a human 2.0 to control the people more to get their ideology um, really intact. So all this other stuff that people are getting caught up on is just creating, you know, adding fuel to the fire. Well, what I was going to ask you is, um, like, that is something that you said a lot just in that that bit that you just said. And so I'm trying, I'm like going, okay, so as far as I can see, um, yeah, what I, what I've been, um, what I've been taking from that and sort of what uh, I sometimes talk about too, it's it's like you can feel the emotion of things that are going on, but don't hold on to that emotion because, because that emotion is like kind of a trap <laughs> um, that keeps you, that will head you yeah. in, head you in a direction that it could be very bad. It could be very good. But the thing is, is that you, the neutrality is something that people I think have a hard time understanding now because the way that we're always taught is you have to go with it with this passion and whatever. And it's like, it doesn't mean you don't have passion. It just means that you have to, you have to be the observer and then you have to make um, decisions based on not the emotion of it. Does it, isn't, is that what you're kind of talking about with that? Pretty much. Yeah, you just have to stay neutral and you can't base yeah. your opinions on what's good for other people. You know, that's what life is about. It's the ever unfolding of consciousness. You know, there's no manual or direction saying, hey, this is how life is supposed to be. And once you take on um, an opinion on someone's ideology, you add energy into that. And like I said, the universe doesn't recognize good or bad. It recognizes low and high energy, you know, vibration. Right. And that's a hard yep. concept for people. And, you know, the, the other side is just as messed up as it is within this world, which reflects it. And it's against the original blueprint. But if someone's free will is to experience this, whether it's good or bad, then you can't interfere with it. So, you know, I, I would say this, this is kind of weird. You know, if you go back to like religion, you know, it, it, it imposes yep. its ideology on you. You can't do this, you can't do that. And it's a low vibration. But if you take something, and I'm just saying out of example, you know, like a cult yep. or something, and they don't push their ideology on you or say you can't do this or do that, and they just present something to you, and you're attracted to it. And if you 
find that beneficial, then that's a benefit for you. And you may stand back and say, well, that's a bad thing. But for that person that free willy, free willingly chooses it, that that's what they want. And that's what life is about, is about experiencing it. But the one thing right. you're not supposed to do is impede on other people's free will. Once you do that, then you go against the original blueprint. And, you know, the one thing I always tell people is you have to unlearn to learn stuff. And, you know, there, 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 there were a lot of times I questioned about my channels. I was like, who are these ancient builders? And, you know, are, are they some kind of group that's presenting to be something that they're not, but they've taken care of right. me. They, they, everything I've channeled, you know, I'm, I'm a 150% sure of their uh, teachings. And, you know, I, I was into it, it, not the new age, but, you know, spirituality and, you know, the last year I would present these ideas to them. And, you know, I've lost some people and on the, the YouTube channels, I'll, I'll get comments saying, you know, this is different. And it is because it's going to be a hard pill for people to swallow that the energy or um, what entities you think you're channeling or, or getting answers from may not be what you originally think. And unfortunately, 95% of what people, you know, get their information from is from the spirit world, which is conditioned to be um, parallel with this matrix and there's a lot of nuances going on a lot of trickery um just a lot of whole stuff going on so you know like the Pleiadians, you know everybody thinks they're good and there's a lot of information coming from and you got subgroups that are good and some groups that are out for their own uh, benefit because you know the pleiadians right you know, they're going through the same thing that we're going through and you have to remember at the end of the day they're looking out for their own well-being just as as we are and you know they, they may not tell you everything because they want to survive too so not everything is what it, it appears and you got to be very very cautious and uh, you just have to well, you know understand that there's a lot of trickery going on well i was gonna say you know being being a psychic and medium and channel and stuff like that i will say that i definitely agree with you on that because what people see, like, you know, when maybe I do a show on here where I'm giving readings or whatever, what people, I think, don't always realize is that when I'm reading for you, I have protected myself the best I can um, with the creator. And that because when I'm doing a reading, I'm connected to that person's energy the energy of the person they might be trying to contact and then you know i whenever i'm doing readings you definitely have to use protection because um you open yourself up as an open channel and you know especially when people are first starting out they don't realize how important it is and how easily your energy can be manipulated like any time, any second of the day. And I mean, when I leave my house, my house is like my castle. But when I leave my house, I have to protect myself every day, every second of the day. <laughs> I, yeah, because you can, you, you're going to be like a magnet for other energies and vibrations that they attract it to you. And, you know, the one thing that people Good, don't bad, realize. Yep is that yep. it, what you realize what's going on in this matrix is there's a lot there's a lot of sinister forces at play here and they're looking to get control of your soul that's what the end game here is to recondition exactly. the person's soul to their uh with their ideology and all this illusion i would say we're like that show saturday night live we're yep. like the original cast members playing these facades and parts and it's conditioning your soul. And if you lose your soul, it, you're in trouble. And I've right. seen three times what the controllers look like. And they are pure, evil energy um, entities. And everybody says, oh, you know, we're supposed to love them to help, uh, help them and this and that. And you know what? <laughs> they are pure evil. No way. And uh, <laughs> no. Way. no. 
no, you, you want to stay away from them. You don't want to try to help them cure them or anything like that. What you want to do is get the hell out of this matrix. And when you pass over, you want to go towards your higher self. And I know a couple other channelers right. have said the same thing and they're correct. You know, your friends and family will meet you and that's how they, you, you get tricked. You know, they got the party, let's celebrate. And then, you know, you got your guides and your angels and they'll say, you know, let's see what you've learned and then go back. And what you have to understand, this matrix is not, it, it's crazy. This isn't the school of learning. If you were a creator, would you send your child to a crazy school like this? No. But people accept that. you got to right. go through this bull crap to ascend. And what I'm trying to tell everybody is every person here, your true essence is a soul. It, too many people get caught up. Oh, look, what was, what was I before I was a human? You know, was I a Pleiadian, a Syrian, a lyric? It doesn't matter. True essence is as a soul, and that's what people um, forget about. That's who you truly are. You're just in these different physicalities that experience stuff. But the human body is very sought after because when it's fully turned on, it's a very powerful um, capsule for the soul. And that's why it was shut down because if we were fully aware, the controllers would have no control over us. But Earth itself is sought after. Not every planet is like this. With abundance of food. Yeah. What, what makes the humans different is your heart chakra, because a lot of your galactic cousins do not have that, and they're they're neutral in their feelings. Not that it's bad, and you know the ancient builder race they're very neutral. They they have a tough time understanding about love and compassion because they're very neutral. It's black and white. Where when you're in the human capsule, it's there's a lot of gray area, and the love capacity component is what they experience and how they get souls. Because when you have love, it's the greatest thing in the world. Then not every entity can experience that. Well, you're exactly right about that because I, you know, I just was okay. So I had an experience this morning, and then I'll kind. Of, it kind of goes off the subject a little, but then I come back around to it. But so we talk about the matrix. We talk about like. There are different um, dimensions happening, you know, timelines happening all at the same time. So just something that was really interesting this morning is I went to go make a cup of coffee. So I put I put everything in. I put my my coffee in. I flipped it down before I flipped it down. The top of the coffee pot literally was clean as a whistle. I came back two seconds later to get my coffee. And it looked like somebody had set uh -huh. a coffee cup and left a ring on the top of it. And I'm <laughs> like, okay, this is, this is like one of those weird things that I'm like, okay, this is like, did I just walk through a time? Did I just seamlessly go from timeline to timeline? And it seems silly, but it's like noticing those little things. But you're right about coming back around to what you were saying about the, um, we being very special because you know it's like if they if okay so talking about our heart chakra we're talking about the fact that with the um heart chakra not every not every everyone has that as far as entities or whatever um but i've always thought as time has gone on as i have learned things that we are very valuable to them, um, to all of them, because of what we have. And it's kind of amazing because it's almost like we were this big experiment and they're, and, and they're all watching and going, what can we learn? What can, and some of them are saying, what can we get from them? Um, uh, what do you think about the, um, like ley, ley lines and stuff on the earth. What did those incorporate everything for us as human beings as far as this whole matrix thing? Does that make sense? Yeah, so before I get into the ley lines, you, you know, it, going back to what I was saying before, okay. like if you think about the souls, we've been here, and, and there's no time on the other side, but souls have been here. Right. For a very, very, very long time. 
And if you think about, you know, setting up a school like this, why would you need guides and angels to, um, to teach you when you've been around for so long and you've been into other realities? It doesn't make sense. You, the original blueprint was you were in control of yourself. You had your own free will. You chose what reality you want. When you come here, you got too many conditionings and, and guides and whatnot, and that's not the way it's supposed to be. As far as the ley lines go and the energy grids, the ancient building races do have, when they set up set up this foundation, they did lay down energy grids and ley lines, and, and, and you got a lot of light workers that come here that try to activate it. And, you know, the controllers, they use those ley lines to uh, bombard this uh, sector with energies. You know, astrology is the, you know, th those are energies that were set up by the controllers. They're not in other realities. You have the planets with their energies, it, you know, the moon, which is their face. Mm -hmm. You have all these energies to control this matrix. And, you know, the ancient builder races, they're trying to teach everybody. Okay. You have these energies. So, you know, everybody's like, oh, retrograde is coming. And everybody fears it. But if you use those energies <laughs> with your benefit and know how to do it, just like with your own personal energy, right? you can weave through everything. Mm -hmm. You're going to come across a lot of bull crap. It's not like you can be like Teflon Don and avoid everything. But it's how you right. <laughs> And that's the key because everybody well, thinks. I just wanted oh my to God, mention. I can't really, I gotta go yes. This and that. Go ahead. Right. Right. Um, what I was going to say is, if anybody has a question, I know that some of this can maybe be a lot to take in, but just think about it. Um, and if you have a question uh, for Jim, just um, put it in the comments, and we will get to that for sure. Um, I wanted to say hello to Wendy, who's watching, and Tina. Um, thank you guys so much. And Debbie was watching, too. Um, so I guess one thing that I have learned is that I I know that my body, um, where we live, um, I met a guy who is, um, he is a land contractor. So he will, um, he uses dowsing rods. He uses his, his electronic equipment, too, but people know he has dowsing rods and there was, they were building this church um, not too far from us. And every time they would go with their electronic equipment, it would go haywire. And um, so they asked him to come in and use his dowsing rods to figure things out. And so he did. Well, the funny thing is um, later I learned that there's a ley line that runs right through where that church is. And so one thing that I've noticed at certain times is that I probably live maybe less than a thousand feet from this ley line. And so sometimes I can notice when it feels like a radio being tuned. Sometimes it like feels like somebody's cranked up the volume or whatever. And other times, it's completely fine. Do you have any knowledge of any of that kind of stuff? Have they ever given you information about that and how it affects, like, the human body or anything? Well, yeah. So right now, you got a lot of low vibration energy through the grids and the ley lines. Um, what the ancients have me doing, um, I actually help grid neutral energy through the, um, the ley lines because... A lot of people think you got to, you know, be loving light you know, to combat the low vibration. It goes back to you actually are going against the ideology of a person's um, system. Uh, own power. So even though the controllers hijacked this, even yeah. though they hijacked it and they set up the system, when you go with the opposite energy, their ideology that's going against their free will, even though it's wrong. And when you send that energy against it, it actually gets absorbed by it and adds momentum to it. So what the ancients have been doing is laying neutral energy through the grids and the ley lines, because when you do neutral energy, it gives a person um, the ability to be cognizant and think for themselves, because you got 
think about it, you got chemtrails, you got GMOs in your food, you got electronic devices, right. you're conditioned from the moment you're born as a baby from your community, from your religion, from your parents, from schooling, from think and act a certain way. And when you take a step back, how the hell is this alerting school um, when you can't even think for yourself, but yet when you pass over to the other side, they're going to say, well, you didn't learn your lessons, so you got to go back. It, it, it's crazy. So you're not even doing a fair shake. You're up against these opposed forces. But you can't do the opposite of um, force because you add momentum to it. So that's where the key of neutrality comes in. Because if you add enough neutral energy, then the person can cognizantly think for themselves and say, oh, you know what? I'm starting to wake up on Things. This is wrong. That's wrong. And then they start um, spending for themselves and start, you know, researching stuff. And then they start getting a clear mind. And that's what the ancients were trying to do. And like I said, that's why you don't see a lot of galactic cousins here trying to save us because they can't go against the will, whether right. it's right, wrong, or different. Right. And that's um, that's the key to the system of keeping everybody in is that trickery right there. And it's just a hell of a system that they uh that they made up yeah hmm um so i guess kind of a question that comes up is that um what what are you getting um, from from them and what are you channeling that is telling telling us um i know about what you're talking about as far as um not the emotions, but you know what I'm talking about, the um, neutrality. But um, so as far as going forward, what do people, what should people being be relying on within themselves um, going forward that will be for their best interest as individuals? Does that make sense as a question? <laughs> yep. Yeah, so, you know, it, nobody predict the future, that's why we're here. You can only read where energy is going. Um, and, you know, I started picking up this stuff last year, and like I said, the next 10 years, and many other channels I've said, you know, between 2020 and 30, 2030, or the changeover years, and they're absolutely correct, because this is, you know, up until four months ago, about how things have changed, and how our lives have changed, we lost our freedom, and you know, we're being conditioned. It's just the beginning, and you know, unfortunately, people don't like to deal with the doom and gloom, but unfortunately, that's reality. And a lot of people want to stick their head in the sand and say, no, 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 everything's going to be okay, and love and light. And, and you want to have positive thinking, but that's where people get caught, because you can't just wish it and uh, not do anything. Because energy is, you know, it, it begins with a the thought that you put energy into it, that action. And if you only got two of the three, things aren't going to change, and that's why we're here to change things. And the next 10 years are going to be very pivotal. And I, I said in a couple of my channels before, this is only the beginning. It's for this time, you know, get people dependent on the system. And we're basically going to a socialist communist state. And in the next two to three years, the next thing that's going to become very important is water. That's going to become a commodity. You're, you're going to find that a lot of pipes in the ground are corroded, a lot of your water is going to be contaminated. That's how we control regions and control peoples through water population. Um, and it's just going to be one bombardment after another. And it's things that we're going to have to deal with. And, you know, what I'm getting, and a lot of other people, you know, in the fall, you know, the coronavirus is going to make its second headway. And, you know, I've said that, you know, there is a virus, but it's controlled by 5G. That's why you're different sections of the country get bombarded. So right now it's the Midwest. It's controlled by 5G and electronic devices, and that's how they're able to control which sections they want. So, you know, it's going to reactivate in the fall and winter, and they're going to mandate the vaccine for people. And just like you can't go anywhere without a mask, you're going to require identification card that you had the vaccine, or you can't go there. Um, and then, you know, down the road, they're going to say, well, people are uh, duplicating the, the vaccination card, so now we're going to chip you. And it's just going to go further and further into creating artificial intelligence. And, you know, if 
I told people, if you want to see where we're going, look at China. They have a social rating system, so, you know, if they do, if they go to, like, uh, a liquor store that's not, you know, viewed as creditable, they lose credits, um, you know, their, their factories, the, um, the people are, are monitored by their emotions, they have drones monitoring people, um, you're going to see the rise of artificial intelligence come out of nowhere, which it is, and people are going to be like, you know, within 100 years, it's like, how did this happen to us? We're being controlled by artificial intelligence. That's a um, key point where the controllers want. They want artificial intelligence. So that's why I tell people, don't get too caught up with the politics and, 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 and this and that that's going on. You can observe it and say, okay, this is what's going on. But you have to be smarter. you gotta, you got to see the forest through the tree. Right. What's really the big picture is right now, people are getting distracted. You got people being divided by age, by gender, uh, by sexuality, by um, classes, by color. To distract people. This way, they implement the, uh, the true uh, game plan that they want. Um, yeah, I, I we have a question from Wendy. Um, she's saying, and I want to see what your take is on this. But she says sometimes I go somewhere that I've never been. And once I get there, I swear I've been there before. She goes, she goes. I call it deja vu. Um, sorry for the spelling, but what do you think about the whole idea of deja vu? I think, you know, you talk about timelines, and everybody's like, I right. switch my timeline with this or with that, and and time doesn't really exist outside of this matrix. And your body is connected to your soul, which is in the energy world, and time is kind of flowing simultaneously, and you're kind of experiencing things as it's happening to your, you know, with your with your soul core. That's why a lot of, you know, like, you can read energy where it's going and whatnot, even though it hasn't happened, it is happening, because, you know, the past, the present, the future is happening. At the same time, it's kind of for the human brain to um, comprehend that because we always got to compartmentalize everything and make sense of everything and say this is the way it's supposed to be. And if it doesn't fit in that box, it can't happen. And I always tell people, well, look around you, look at the physical world. Do you think this just happened by chance? This happened by pure energy. And you know, no matter what, there's magic involved with how this happened. And you can't explain how the five creators. Know, expand it on itself. You can try to figure it out, but you can't. And just like with time, you know, things are happening. So your 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 soul. I, and I've had these job proof. Your soul sometimes can read the energy of what's going to happen to you in the future, and it, it, you know, it, it's something that you know you, you just kind of you're psychic. Everybody's psychic, and you can just already know that it's happening. So that's where deja vu kind of lies. And you, you just pick up that energy with it from your soul and it's just happening to you. Yes. It, it's happened to you in the future, which is happening to you in the present. If that makes sense. Because it's all the same. <laughs> it is. It's yeah. all it's yeah. well it's weird, but I think sometimes, you know, like I was explaining the coffee pot thing, sometimes you if sometimes you get to see it you get to see it happen it doesn't happen i guess i don't know why i i mean i have a tendency to try to notice things like that and um you know so that things like that have happened to me before where i have been i gotta say and i've told this story a few times probably but um it's like i've been in a situation where i was driving and all of a sudden, I see myself. It's like I open my eyes again, and like I, it's like a little blackout. But there are four or five years that it's happened ago, and um, it's weird because, and maybe this is like me thinking that there's conspiracy things, but um, there was this um, big black. Um, SUV kind of suburban like thing with blacked out windows 
right behind me when this happened. And I was like, okay, I don't want to go into that weird space, but I know that things are possible. And um, oh, yeah. so it made me feel like I had left, I had left my consciousness and then jumped back in like seconds later, but I, it was noticeable. So have, have you had any kind of experiences like that? You're welcome, Wendy. <laughs> Man, I, I've had a lot of experiences. And, you know, the, the one thing everybody's got to understand is this matrix. You, all you do is identify with what's in front of you with your five senses. So we know white light's there, but we can't see it until, you know, it, it, it's bent by a mirror or glass. And then you can definitely see what makes up the white light. And you have to understand that there's so many invisible stuff going on that you know that wouldn't make sense to your five senses but yeah and, um, right you know because this life is held together by you know light thought energy harmonic waves uh vibrations um so you experience those but also too you have a lot of the experiments going on this is a, it's it's very complicated it's like really if you think <laughs> yes you know, you got MK Ultra. You got people doing yeah. um, experiments on you. Um, you have uh, aliens doing experiments on you. And you know, I, I always question. I was like, well, you know, talk about this free will and aliens. You know, how could they come and not try to save us, but they can do all these experimentations? And what the ancients told me was, you know, those souls before they come here, they'll make a contract. And say, okay, at this point in my life, I'll be um, available to be uh, abducted and for experimentation. So that's how they get around part of their energy rules. Is when you make an agreement with that, then they have your permission to come in, abduct you without taking on that contract. Just like you know, with the dollar bill, it's got the land word, you know, new world order or new world something. And mm -hmm. you know, we carry these symbols and we leave our permission to. To be an experiment for certain things. So before you come here, you know, it doesn't surprise me that, you know, the strange phenomenon is happening because we agree to be a part of this experiment. Yeah. I I have found that um I have found that and what I think what is weird for people is that it's safe for them to I mean, hey, we're only human, but <laughs> It's safe for people to think that they're in a world that is three-dimensional, <laughs> that there's what you see is what it is. And, you know, for us to believe that we didn't create that stuff or, you know, there's a certain amount of control that someone has over us when we don't believe that we don't create what's in front of us for a reason. Does that make sense? You, you know, there's always that reality, you know, you create reality and you're control and, and to a certain degree, you got to create within the framework, the framework of this matrix. Um, you know, right. you can't just go out and say, well, you know, I'm going to man, uh, manifest a million dollars. It goes back to the three components. You know, you need energy, thought, and action. If you want to make that million dollars and you put your work into it, you can do it. But a lot of people just start to stop at the energy and the thought part and they don't believe the action part. And you got to have that within this matrix in the framework because it goes back to you got a lot of opposition stuff against you in this matrix to keep you down. And, you know, if you're not smart about it or, you know, anything, you got to reset your mind and realize what you're in because the way the system is set up, you know, you're set up to go to school, get a job, get married work all these crazy right. hours and you know your condition and you forget what life is really about and you get caught up into these uh, scenarios and i say you know the heart chakra it's what keeps you embedded in this reality because if you turn it off you will see things a little clearly but that's why you come here for the experience of the love chakra uh, you know the love of your family the love of your life the, the love of everything right else. It keeps you embedded, and it, it, it's what makes this reality so real. Is that 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 feeling sense? Not just love, but what's real, what's not real. Love, hate, you know, all those expressions of emotions is what keeps you in 
entrenched in this physicality. And until you learn how to harness that energy, it will either you'll either thrive or you'll you know you'll die. Yeah. So Terry was asking James about um, is there a book about the ancient builder race and or the matrix? What would you recommend besides your YouTube channel? <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm actually writing a book right now. Um, I hate writing. Oh, nice! That was one thing I you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I, that's not my thing, but um, I'm actually writing a book because I, I haven't done any. I've taken the summer off. So I was kind of burnt for channeling. I'll be going back to it in the fall. But the ancients want a book on how to maneuver, how to harness your energy and harness it through this matrix because. As we progress into electronically, you know, there's going to be so much um, um, dictatorship on what, what's going to be on uh, YouTube and whatnot, and my channel will eventually get lost. And when you do channelings, because it's so convoluted, you know, if somebody picks up like channeling in the 35th and they miss the first 34, they're not really going to understand what the ancient builder race is about. So they want me to write a book. So this way it's there for future generations because we're going to need it because in a hundred years from now, when artificial intelligence takes over, that's when the true rebellion will be. But it may be too late because you're going to have people hooked up as what I call the human 2.0, your guns will be taken away and you're not have a lot of arsenal to combat what's going on. And actually artificial intelligence you know, the controllers that want to set up, they're going to have a lot of trouble um, controlling the artificial intelligence because it's going to outsmart them, too. Yeah. So that book should be out probably well, thank- within a year. Okay, get on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, thank you for that question, Terry. Wendy says, what is your opinion about astro projection? Well... You know, when I meditate, I walk between the two different dimensions, this one and the ancient builder race, because I am a descendant of them. Um, you know, I, I was sent here, um, I probably started back out around ancient Egypt, because uh, I can see myself as an ancient builder uh, when I meditate. And, you know, I when I meditate, I astral project, and I can go between the different dimensions. Um, so when you it's just like a muscle. So the more right. you work at it, the more you can do it. And I, I kind of don't call it ash projection. I call it kind of walking between the dimensions and where you were and where you are right now. And it's a very cool thing. It's it's not easy to do, um, but it is very beneficial. But I will say, unless you're prepared to fully understand what's going on, it can confuse you because when I see... You know where I came from, um, and, and, and my my ancient builder race family. You know, it goes back to my heart shock, you know, and I'm like, I, I feel a loss. I'm like, wow, I miss home. I miss, you know, seeing my friends um, on that side, and you feel very alone. You know? And it could do re- havoc on your personal body, emotions. So mm-hmm. unless you're really in control, and you have a lot of self. Um, empathy control, you know, I, I, I wouldn't go too, too crazy with it. I would just concentrate on yourself here now, understand what's really going on. And because even though you can astral project, you, you're still encompassed with this body capsule and you got to learn to use your energy within this capsule, within this matrix. And until you pass over on the other side and you pass by all your friends, you go through your high and get out of this, Recycling tricky center, just concentrate on your body right now and, and make it the strongest that you can. Yeah. No, that's, that's, thank you. Thank you, Wendy, for that question. So, Jim, I, I've got a question for you. So, when you get up in the morning, what is your routine on how you go about your day? Do you do any kind of protection for yourself, your energy? How, how does that work for you throughout your day? Well, and, you know. Well, 
you know, I'm just like, you know, I get, I got a job. I, uh, I use a code name, you know, my true soul name, Ano Dano. Uh, I might think to protect myself because, you know, I kind of always say I feel like Batman. I'm like Bruce Wayne during the day, and I'm Batman all day. And, um, <laughs> you know, I wake up in the morning. I, I do a 10 minute meditation to get myself grounded and, and to get the positive energy going. Then, you know, I go throughout my human life, and I'm cognizant through the day that, you know, I'm in control of my energy. Right? You know, if I let emotions get the best of me, I notice that it becomes like a snowball. So, you know, I'm always trying to stay neutral with stuff. You know, I'm not trying to get too high or too low. Um, and then when I come home, probably for like a half hour before I go to bed, I meditate. And I'll astral project, I'll, I'll walk into the dimension, and I'll, I'll go to the engine build a raised dimension. And, you know, I'll get information, go you know, have the good energy, lay lines. Um, and, and that that's about it you know I, i'm everybody thinks they got to do every, something spectacular in this life and i always tell everybody you know you, your first and foremost job is to take care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself you can't help other people and if you're not in the right frame of mind and if you don't have your life straightened out you're not going to be able to help other people and you know it goes back to you know if people have a contract, and this is very hard to understand, whether it's your kids, your family, your friends, if somebody has a contract to experience something and you try to keep on that contract and you're totally trying to help them, it's like banging your head against the wall. You, It's very hard to step back and let that person experience it. You can be there for them when they're attracted to you and they need help, but when you forcefully try to impose your free will on them to help them, you get caught up in the energy, you get caught up in frustration, and you actually make your situation worse because you're adding fuel to the fire. And if you notice a lot of people, when you try to help people in trouble, the person resists more and makes the situation worse because you're adding energy into it. So throughout the day, you have to remember that. If something comes up, your boss yells at you or gets mad, and you know you resist it, you got to stay neutral. Because if you don't, you add fuel to the fire. So that's what you got to be very cognizant of today. Is it, it's you, you've got to be in control of your emotions, because that dictates right. your day, and that's how you create your reality. Yep. Yep. No, that's perfect. So what I wanted to say is, so I wanted to remind everybody to um, head over to your YouTube channels, the, the old one and the current one, so they can get all of the, all of the channelings. And that's Ancient Master Builder Race, correct? Correct, thank you. Don't mind the first 10 channelings. I was learning how to channel, but you're pretty sketchy for that. <laughs> what? Oh, <laughs> well, uh, I, you know, I really uh, appreciate you coming on today and um, I think that it will be enlightening for a lot of people um, because this is something that people don't always talk a lot about, you know, mainstream. I mean, psychic mediumship stuff is not really that mainstream either, but this is really not that mainstream. But it's information that people really need to know and need to hear. And um, so I appreciate um you and what you have to say and is there anything that you want to say um as we close out the show today to everyone i just want to thank you and thank everybody in the audience some great questions i appreciate the platform for an hour you know the ancient bill raised aren't teachers we're just here to discern information to get it you know, whether or whether you take it or what you take from it it's up to you they're not here to save or to teach anybody. They're here just to present with information. You're in charge of your own life. And what you do with it is upon you. And, uh, you know, I had a great time this hour. And it was an honor and pleasure for me to, uh, to be on the show. I appreciate it very much. Oh, you're very welcome. And we'll have you on um, before your book is done. And you can tell us how you're progressing on it. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for coming on. Thank you to Jim. And um, we hope to see you again soon. We'll be back on, on Monday with Beth Newman. 
um, and she will be talking about theta healing. And so we hope you guys will join um, Amy and I then, and hopefully Amy is feeling better. So anyway, take care, everyone. Jim, thanks again, and we will see you again soon. <laughs> Thank you so, so much.